Did Albert Einstein go to heaven or hell? Albert Einstein lived in a world of equations, stars, and mysteries. To many, he was the closest thing humanity ever had to a living symbol of genius. His mind reshaped physics, time, gravity, and the very structure of the universe. But he was also human flawed, curious, stubborn, compassionate, and deeply troubled by how the world used his ideas. And when his final hour came, even the greatest scientist had to face the one truth no theory could escape. Every soul must stand before God. The deaf scene, Albert Einstein spent his final evening in Princeton Hospital, weakened by a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm that he refused surgery for, wishing instead for a natural death. The room was dim and quiet, lit only by a soft lamp beside his bed. His breathing grew shallow, each inhale slower than the last, and the sharp pain in his abdomen pulsed deeper into silence. He looked toward the window, where night settled gently over New Jersey, and whispered a few final words in German too faint for anyone to understand. His heartbeat weakened, his eyes softened, and his body relaxed. At 1.20 a.m., with no fear, only exhaustion, he exhaled one last time and slipped peacefully out of the world he had spent his life trying to understand. The courtroom of heaven Einstein opened his eyes to a reality no theory had ever predicted, and the universe around him seemed to stretch without boundaries, alive, luminous, greater than space-time itself. He stood in a vast celestial hall, where galaxies swirled like living murals and light shimmered like a river flowing from the throne and his body felt weightless while his mind felt clearer than ever before. And then he saw him, the Almighty, seated on a throne that blazed with truth and majesty, and time itself seemed to bow before him. A voice filled the heavens, deeper than gravity, brighter than starlight. Albert Einstein, step forward, welcome to judgment. And Einstein trembled not from fear, but from awe. His entire life had been dedicated to understanding the universe, but now he stood before the one who created it. To his left, a figure formed from shadow sharp, cold, watchful, the accuser, and he smiled with cruel delight. So here is the great Einstein, the man who thought he could explain God's universe while refusing to accept God himself. Let his life be examined, and God lifted his hand. Let the truth be shown. Before the replay of sins, pause and reflect. If your life were judged today, would you be ready? Jesus says, come to me while there is still time. Write in the comments, forgive my sins, Lord. And don't forget to like and subscribe so more souls can hear this message. Now, let us return to the replay of sins as God shows sins before final judgment. Replay of sins, light erupted across the sky forming a vast tapestry of Einstein's life, his childhood in Ulm, early school struggles, and his passion for mathematics growing like a flame, and he saw his breakthrough years. The miracle year of 1905, with the photoelectric effect, Brownian motion, special relativity, and then general relativity with the bending of starlight. But the accuser stepped forward saying, show the parts he never spoke of. And the scenes shifted as Einstein saw his pride times, he dismissed others quickly, felt superior, or rejected ideas that did not fit his equations. And he saw strained relationships, mistakes in marriage, and emotional distance from some of his children. He watched himself choose work over family, abstraction over presence, and the accuser thundered. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. His brilliance became his idol. The light changed again as Einstein saw his doubts about God, his belief in a cosmic religion, but rejection of a personal creator. And he heard himself say, God does not play dice, yet avoided acknowledging God as Lord. And the accuser pointed with venom. From the book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse 1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Weinstein's head lowered. I struggled to believe in a personal God, but I never denied wonder or mystery. I saw beauty in the laws of the universe and felt reverence. And the accuser hissed. 
Reverence without obedience is rebellion, and what of the atomic bomb? His theories unlock destructive power. Einstein's eyes filled with sorrow as he watched himself. Write to President Roosevelt out of fear Nazis would strike first. And he saw Hiroshima and Nagasaki and heard his later words. If I had known, I would have burned my calculations. And God raised his hand and the heavens fell silent. The verdict. Albert Einstein, the Lord said. I have seen your brilliance, your flaws, your doubts, and your grief. And I have seen your humility and your yearning for truth. The accuser cried out, he doubted you. He questioned you. He trusted in intellect, not faith. And God's voice thundered. From the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And he sought me, not through rituals or tradition, but through wonder, curiosity, and honest wrestling with reality. The accuser stepped back trembling, and God continued, Albert, you confessed your imperfections, recognized the moral weight of your discoveries, opposed tyranny, and spoke for peace. You grieved when your work contributed to harm, admitted your limits, and that humility is not lost to me. A warm, radiant light flowed from the throne, surrounding Einstein like a cosmic embrace, and God said, from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 6, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Though you wrestled with belief, your heart leaned toward truth, beauty, and responsibility, and I judge the heart, not the equations. Einstein felt tears warm cleansing, unlike anything on earth, and Albert Einstein, the Lord said softly, Enter my rest. The accuser vanished like smoke, and the heavens opened, revealing vistas beyond any star field he had imagined. Einstein stepped forward not as a genius or scientist, but as a soul finally understanding the author of the universe. Moral lesson in prayer, genius cannot save a soul. Knowledge cannot replace humility. The greatest minds still bow before the one who created all things. What matters in the end is not how much we understood, but whether we sought truth with sincerity and walked with humility. Lord Jesus, teach us to pursue truth with a humble heart. Come to me while there is still time. Write in the comments, Forgive my sins, Lord. And don't forget to like and subscribe so more souls can hear this message. Now, let us return to the replay of sins as God shows sins before final judgment.